you are banished from Iacon. <sighs> this isn't over, Prime. Also, why exactly are we talking to each other like it's a G1 episode? Now, till we meet again. What's going on everybody, Republic Cinema here, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the brand new Transformers Studio Series TF1, Megatron. Now, this figure, aside from Optimus Prime, will be the only TF1 figures this year for Studio Series, and it's a bit of a shame. But anyways, in case you haven't watched the movie, then don't watch this video in case you want to avoid spoilers. Megatron here had one of the best character arcs a Transformers movie could offer for Megatron. Unfortunately, despite the cool designs that he had in the Bayverse, he was unfortunately underused. But not in this movie. Obviously, he started out as a normal cogless miner, and as the movie progressed, his character started to build up into something, um, evil. The whole time for the second half of the movie, he simply just absolutely hated Sentinel Prime after he found out who he truly was. And he wanted some justice. But let's be honest, his version of bringing Sentinel Prime to justice was, um, brutal, let's just say. Let me know down in the comments if you guys also rooted for this guy. Also, I would like to point out that it's been roughly seven years since we saw Megatron in the big screen. The last time we saw him was in Transformers The Last Night. But anyways, after a long wait, he's finally back. And followed by his cool character would be this awesome deluxe class from the studio series. But before we take a look at the figure, let's take a quick look at the packaging. So starting off on the front is this nice artwork of Megatron from Transformers 1. The rest of the box is all words, names, and logos. On the top is this nice TF1 logo. And on the bottom is all boring. On the side is the same artwork of Megatron, just zoomed out. And on the other side is a more zoomed in look to Megatron. And then you turn to the back and you get a little more info on what you get inside the packaging. And on the bottom of the back is basically boring. And that's pretty much it for the packaging. Now back to the figure. So starting off, painting and sculpting is pretty good, pretty good. The sculpting in some parts is relatively immaculate, especially for the head sculpt. The chest looks nice. The arms also look great. However, the tank tread kibble on the hands kind of remind me of how some of the Age of Extinction mainline toys were back in the day. At least this one doesn't have a big heap of kibble wrapped around the fingers. Also, the legs look great. Apparently, there were some complaints on how long the legs were, but honestly, I find it not too bothersome at all. And then you turn to the back is, um, there is actually some kibble on the back of the legs, which technically don't tab into anything. They just slide it onto those slots and they stay there. But again, they aren't too bothersome. And if you want, you can actually remove them. Although, if I were you, I probably wouldn't have done that because now the back of the legs just look a little more awkward. He also does come with a removable backpack, which is packaged separately. And no, I don't think this is a jetpack. Megatron did have a backpack in the movie, but it wasn't a jetpack. The only time I think this guy had a jetpack was when he was in his cogless phase. Also, the quality on my copy is not that bad. The joints are not too tight, not too loose in some instances. The only times the joints are tight, however, is on the shoulders, which are on ball joints. Oh, and perhaps the waist movement is also relatively tight too, but other than that, the quality for this figure is pretty much all right. So now I suppose it's time we move on to accessories. So starting off, here he is with his fusion cannon, which isn't the exact same fusion cannon he had in his full potential mode as the cogged version of Megatron, but rather this is the version of his fusion cannon when he was in his post-cog D16 mode. Still a cool fusion cannon nonetheless. All you gotta do is slide it on to the left side of the arm. And there you have Megatron with his fusion cannon. He also does come with this little piece which serves as an attachment for the fusion cannon. But that is used for tank mode. But if you want, in terms of creativity, you could have it as the full potential Megatron fusion cannon. Most people just store it on the side of the right arm. Because in the movie he did have another side arm gun. And again for creativity, you could have the other side of the gun facing forward. Forward. Oh, and did I also forget to mention that this is blast effect compatible? Same thing with the normal fusion cannon. You could also do this too. For weapon storage, the extra sidearm gun piece goes on the back. And then there are also two identical guns right here, which are 
primarily used for alt mode, that's why in robot mode they just chill in the backpack. But that doesn't mean they cannot serve as side arm guns as well. Unfortunately, not so blast effect compatible. And one more thing, he can also hold them with his hands as if he were holding dual wielded pistols. And those are all the accessories that he comes with. Now moving on to articulation, ball joint at the head, which can allow the head to move up and down, and rotate 360. Full rotation at the arm, bend at the shoulder, elbow swivel, double bend at the elbow, wrist swivel, waist swivel, legs can spread, leg can move forward, can also move backwards. No thigh swivel unfortunately, unless you count this transformation step as a thigh bend. Bend at the knee, which tabs in when transformed. Knee swivel, the foot can move up and down, and can also rock from side to side. And yeah, that's pretty much it for articulation. Overall pretty great, especially for a deluxe class figure. But with the articulation out of the way, we can move on to size comparison. Starting off with the 2007 Megatron, the Bayway knockoff of the Transformers 2007 Megatron, Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, Battle Damage Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, Bayway Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, Dark of the Moon Megatron, Universal Megatron, Galvatron, Gamer Edition War for Cybertron Megatron, Concept Art Bumblebee Movie Megatron. To pair him along with some other TF1 figures, here he is next to the Studio Series TF1 Optimus Prime. And for the Prime Changers, here he is next to the Orion Pax B127, Alpha Trion, which I hope is a Voyager class in the Studio Series, Sentinel Prime, which will be a Voyager class in the Studio Series, can't wait for that. And lastly, the Quintesson. And now here he is next to the only other Studio Series TF1 figure for now, that being Optimus Prime. Unfortunately, these two will be the only Studio Series figures this year, but at least for next year, we have about four new TF1 Studio Series figures coming out, such as B127, Elite 01, Starscream, and Sentinel Prime. Can't wait for those. But for now, what do you think of these figures? And which one's your favorite out of the two, Megatron or Optimus? But now with that out of the way, we can move on to transformation, which is pretty straightforward. Starting off with the arms, straighten them up, rotate the hand like this, rotate the lower part of the arm, and then close it all the way in, in which this slot will tab onto that tab right there. The same goes for the other side. After that, untab the backpack. You can snap it off in case it becomes too annoying for you, but personally I'd like to keep it in. Rotate the head, untab the entire chest, leave it out like so, and then bring the head down, and then bring this whole section up as well, and then we'll just leave everything here for now. Let's work on the legs. So starting off before you do anything, make sure that you straighten the leg like this, and then push this down. Rotate this whole assembly, and before you do anything, just make sure that the legs are straightened out in case that they're not. Move this section outward move this tread upwards, straighten the foot, and then rotate this whole assembly, push the front tread down, and then close this whole thing, make sure that this tab tabs on onto that slot right there. You do the same thing for the other side, and lastly you're going to move this chest piece down until these tabs right on the side of the legs tab it onto those two slots. Push this entire assembly inwards, rotate the folded in shoulder until it tabs in, same thing for the other side. After that, rotate the backpack, and then you're going to want to come back to the fusion cannon and that extra attachment for the fusion cannon and plug the two together. This slot will tab in onto that tab right there, and there's the tank gun. And here we have the Studio Series TF1 Megatron in his tank mode. Of course, not the best looking tank, but at the same time a pretty good tank nonetheless. The transformation was also pretty great. Everything tabbed in nicely well, and I love the way the tank gun looks. It's even better since this tank gun has articulation. Since this entire gun assembly is on a swivel joint, it can move from left to right and can also move up and down. Now this time around, this tank mode does not have wheels. Also, you can recreate the part where Optimus Prime removes the entire tank piece from Megatron's tank mode for weapon storage for these two guns. They simply go on the sides of the tank cannon, but since there were slots on the side of the tank itself, you're also given the option to place the guns over there instead of over here. Either way, it's nice having Megatron fully equipped. Also, if you want to get creative, you can also do this or this. You could also put a blast effect onto the slot of the tank gun. So you could have Megatron in his tank mode shooting at someone. And now for a brief alt mode comparison, here he is alongside Optimus Prime in truck mode. And here he is alongside the concept art Megatron in tank mode. Here he is next to all three. 
Personally, I can't wait to see how the other TF1 Studio Series alt modes look alongside Optimus Prime and Megatron. But anyways, let me know in the comments down below which tank mode is better. This one or this one? And I think that's pretty much it. I think that's all I had to say for this guy. Overall, he's a pretty great deluxe class for a Megatron toy. I most definitely recommend you pick up this figure whenever you get the chance. If you are looking to pick this figure up, he is available on Amazon for a little over 25 bucks, but I'm sure that'll go down back to $25 eventually. He is also available at Targets and Walmarts right now, because Target is where I got my copy. But anyways, I hope in the near future Hasbro makes a D16 version, since this is Megatron of course, with the Megatron fusion cannon. I don't know if that's something they would do though. But either way, it would be great to see a different version of this guy. And same thing with Optimus Prime, except he would have to be Orion Pax. I don't think the Cogless Miner versions would be a thing, but it would be cool for Hasbro to figure out a way to make a Studio Series Cogless Miner version of Orion Pax, D16, and of course B-127 and Alita. Till then, there's the Yellow Park versions, of course. But anyways, what do you think of this figure? Are you going to pick him up or just pass up on him? And if you like what you saw in this video, be sure to slam that like button, share this with your friends as well, turn on post notifications so that way you don't miss another upload, let me know how I did in this video, and most importantly, be sure to hit that big red subscribe button. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Tayo!